Well, hello everyone and welcome. It's been a while since I did a texture painting and I thought it was time. So I'm gonna be using some modeling paste, some crackle paste, and a couple of different tools in order to get the texture onto the canvas. And this process actually is pretty quick. It just takes a little bit of drying time because you do want it to be completely dry before you move on to the next step. So in about 20 minutes, it took me basically to get the texture paste onto the canvas. And then I used a variety of tools in order to get different effects effects onto that texture paste. And this is just the modeling paste on here at the moment, but the back of a sponge works really well. And I found this kind of weird tree wrapping tape at the hardware store that made some cool patterns as well. And then I put the crackle paste on. I don't want the whole canvas to be covered in crackle paste, so yeah. Then I let it dry and the next morning I had some beautiful cracks. I had some nice texture and it looked really good. So at that point, it was time to start painting. So I decided to go with a distressed kind of background because of all the cracks and all the texture. So whenever I do that, I tend to start off with a really dark canvas, whether I use black or Payne's gray, but you know how I love my black canvases. So I decided to go with black. And for this, I did use a high flow acrylic in order to get the black on because I knew that it would flow into the cracks really, really nicely. And once that was done, I let it dry completely and then I started adding some lighter colors. So I did add some Payne's Gray and Titanium White to this canvas, but um, it just let them mix together on the canvas. I didn't really do anything, any kind of mixing on a palette or anything like that. And then I went into a warmer kind of white color. And then I go through the back and forth process of adding and removing paint. So for this, I usually just use a spray bottle full of water and paper towels, and then I remove some paint and add other colors to it and do the same thing where I kind of, I use a paper towel in order to even apply paint to the canvas, which I did all around the border and then keep going. It's kind of a fun process because you can be really intuitive with it and you don't have to follow any kind of I don't know, you don't have like a real concept in mind or anything like that. All you're doing is kind of creating a distressed background so you can add as much paint and remove paint as much as you want in order to create the desired effect. So I just went right back and forth using a rubber brayer, adding different tools to this and wherever I thought, oh, it needs a little more balance here. It needs a little more brightness over here. And yeah, it's really kind of a fun process because there isn't there isn't a a like a specific plan in mind. And I think that's the thing that I like about creating backgrounds like this first. So I did want to warm things up a little bit. And in order to get more of that distressed effect, I started to lightly brush on a little bit of burnt umber. Now you'll notice that this is actually way lighter than it turns out to be because for one thing, the ISO on my camera was a little too bright. So you'll actually get to see the colors as they were when it had dried. And of course, acrylics do dry a bit darker than how you apply them. But the ISO on the camera being up too high did create more of a dramatic difference. So now that I had this amazing distress background, what was I going to put on it? So I tend to be a collector of reference photos. And I decided on this one from Unsplash.com that I would put this on my canvas and I wanted it to be the subject and I thought that it would really blend in well. So one of the things that is extremely difficult about doing any kind of drawing on a canvas that has texture is that there are usually only a few parts of the canvas that you can actually like sketch on because there are too many lumps, bumps, cracks, and so on and so forth. So I had to do the majority of the sketching with paint. And I have a couple of different methods that I use in order to sketch with paint so that if I do make any mistakes, you know, it's easy to remedy that problem. And the biggest trick is that I don't use acrylic paint in order to sketch because once that dries, it's on there for life. So I end up using either oil paint or watercolor paint because I usually will finish my paintings with oil and oil paints beautifully over watercolor. It doesn't move and it's because it's you're not using a water-based paint over the watercolor. So in order to get the initial sketch of this on, I actually used watercolor paint. And if you make a mistake, you can just remove it with water. How great is that? 
pretty great, Lydia. Yeah, I know. So the next thing is once that was completely dry, I went on to glazing with oil paint. And this is such a cool process because it actually moves pretty quickly. And I do mean the oil painting process because once you have that sketch on, then all you're really worried about is creating your highlights and your shadows. You don't have to worry so much about mixing colors or anything like that. And that's what makes this process quick. I love glazing with oil paint because I can really, really create those shadows and all of that depth. And I can use a lighter transparent color and then layer a darker transparent color over that to create gradients and also to deepen the shadows in certain areas. And that's what I love about using transparent oils. And the background acts as an amazing foundation to build upon, which also makes the process go faster. And what I mean by that is, well, think of it like this. You already have some really cool kind of abstract effects that are established on your canvas. You have things that you can play off of. And if you use transparents, you're not going to cover everything up. So you'll still be able to see the background through your image, which kind of gives it this double exposure effect. And it makes it so your subject doesn't look like it's just stuck onto your background. It actually is integrated with the background and it has more of a cohesive kind of flair to it where it blends. It's not weird. It doesn't like stick out like a sore thumb. It actually looks like it's meant to be there. So here we have the kind of refining process and this is where I go in and I start using some transparent white oil paint in order to lighten some of the areas and create some of those really nice gradients from the darkest of the shadow colors and it mixes right in with these transparent colors because oil paint you have so much more working time so if you use the transparent white it's really going to work in with some of these colors and create that antique effect effect but it's also going to create these beautiful gradients and this softness which i absolutely love so just starting in with the transparent white and then i can build on top of that with the titanium white in order to get some of those brightest highlights on. So the refinement stage, I do work back and forth with some of the transparents and also working with that transparent white and getting these really soft gradients. And it works out really well. I also do a little bit of glazing in the background with some of the Payne's Gray. And because Payne's Gray is a cool color, it actually makes the background recede a little bit more. And I mainly concentrate just right around the subject. I don't need to cover the whole entire thing with Payne's Gray, but that's really how I get the three-dimensional, like the subject is popping forward a little more than the background, which is receding a little bit more. But um, one thing I do want to say is there is a full-length three video tutorial on this on my Patreon if you want to head over there. And... That's one way where if you really wanted to learn this process from start to finish, I have three videos in this series which go through texture to the background and then finally to the subject. So I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know what you think in the comments. I think that it's a beautiful painting. I love the effect of the texture with this particular painting. It does make it look like it's a lot older and some people might have their own opinions on this and that this might not be their personal aesthetic, but I think it came out really nicely. So thanks for watching guys. I love you and I will see you next time. Bye.